Inside the Tigers is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Inside the Tigers. I'm Johnny Kane. Today we've been invited over to the Mize residence. We know Casey's had a brilliant rookie campaign, but what's he really like away from the field? That's where we come in. But you know what they say about a gathering, you never want to show up empty handed, so you gotta make a quick pit stop on the way. Let's go. With the first selection of the 2018 MLB Draft, the Detroit Tigers select Casey Mize, a right-handed pitcher from Auburn University. It is the most anticipated debut of a Detroit athlete in a long, long time. One, two to Moncada. Oh, got him. Save that one. Wow. What's up, Johnny? What's going on? How's it going? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Welcome in. Is it for you? Thank you. Thanks for, you know, having us over to the place. But I wanted to ask, first off, is the love story, because a lot of times there's like two versions of how everything happens. So what do you remember about when you guys first got together? Like, when were you first smitten? Um, I don't know. I mean, in college, um, she played softball and I, and I played baseball, so we hung out a lot and we were just best friends for the first year. Um, and then I don't know, I think just over time, I'm not sure if there was one moment, but over time we kind of realized that um, it was becoming more than a friendship and became boyfriend and girlfriend. And then, yeah, <laughs> now here we are. I mean, when you first fall in love with somebody, I guess you can't really predict the future, but did you envision that this might end up looking like this one day? Oh my gosh, not at all. We started dating before the baseball season sophomore year, and then I start going to games, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's really good. <laughs> but I mean, prior to that, I truly just thought, you know, he's, we're gonna go to Auburn, he'll probably become either a coach or a police officer, like his dad and brother, and that's pretty much how we talked about life happening after college, and then sophomore and junior year, he was just doing so great and kind of shifted, like, this is really, might be happening, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's tough for me to say I didn't envision this because I had, you know, great plans for what I wanted my baseball career to look like, and, um, you know, by the grace of God, like, it's it's turned out to be pretty much close to, you know, you know what I envisioned, but um, tons of help along the way, but yeah, I mean, to say that, um, it, it's really unrealistic to think that all your dreams are going to come true and you know you're going to achieve goals but you know up to this point um, you know it's it's uh, I've been very blessed you know to be able to make it this far and you know with her by my side to make, make it a lot easier. Junior year in school was the most stressful time of my life you know I was you know pretty high draft prospect at the time um, just going through some stressful things that I didn't really share with my teammates or family just so being, being able to have her uh, to kind of talk through some of those things with, you know, really helped me stay grounded and stay focused on the present and not worry about the draft or, you know, what's going to come after that. So, and that's translated to, you know, throughout the minor leagues, you know, through my big league debut, through my first season when I really struggled. Um, you know, she's always been there to kind of lean on and, you know, talk through those things with because, you know, a lot of those things you don't want to share, you know, sure. uh, with, with others. So um, it, it's it's been, she's been critical, you know, and kind of, keeping me mentally focused and on the present and, you know, helping me through, you know, times of um, struggle, you know, so that, that's allowed me to continue to grow. Well, if you're going to be a world-class athlete, you got to be in good shape, which you are. So how much, uh, how much credit do you take for, you know, feeding this man the right way? I take all of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she should. Um, and actually, it's kind of funny, Casey had a injury in college and I just started researching and reading all these books about inflammation and stuff and I was just like we're gonna get you healthy fast so I just started making all these elaborate meals for lunch and dinner and I would post it on my Instagram story whatever I cooked and I had like 10 people DMing me every single night just asking for recipes so I told Casey I think I should just start a page 
yeah. and post the recipes on it. And I did, and I was very surprised at how many people actually followed it. She makes an awesome, you know, we lived in Nashville for three years, so Nashville hot chicken. Unfried chicken. Yeah. Not really fried. Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing with, uh, with, with some collard greens and sweet potatoes. It's probably my favorite. Like, oh my gosh, I love it. So I know you're passionate about uh, cooking, also passionate about cats, kittens? Yes. <laughs> My favorite animal. I feel like <laughs> I, I was it. one in a past life, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but where is, then, where yeah, is where is, is he? Let's, get him out of here. Let's see this boy. Yep, yeah. this is Drogo. Nice. He is a black smoke Maine Coon. He's our child. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet as can be, huh? He's Looks precious. Looks like he's well fed, huh? Are you cooking for oh, Drogo here? He's just huge. He's gonna be about 25 pounds. What? So he loves to sit on, if you hold him, he'll probably climb on his neck a little bit. He likes to <laughs> wrap around like a neck pillow oh, and nice. just. Yeah. He eats very well. We have to special order his food and he eats oh, yeah. like the best He eats a natural eat. diet, yeah. Yeah, no, he's sweet. Yeah. Maybe we'll get him a brother. <laughs> there you go. Way. One's enough. I'm good I was with gonna this. Say. We don't need any more. I haven't always been at the top. I, you know, had to work my way uh, with the help of a lot of other people, but it's, uh, that definitely does keep me grounded. Congratulations, Casey Mize. Welcome to the big leagues. You're on that fast track. Just keep being yourself, man. Trust yourself. You got here for a reason. You know, you've been fun to watch up to now, and I think the best is yet to come. All the best to you, buddy, except when you're playing us. Good luck. All right, War Eagle. War Eagle. So this is big time. So you're from Alabama. Yeah. You get a bunch of offers, I would assume, or at least some interest from, from some other schools, but it was always going to be Auburn for you, huh? Yeah, I grew up an Auburn fan, grew up going to football games, baseball games, everything. So I knew that's where I wanted to go and they offered me and I committed on the spot. So it's technically my only offer, um, but it was my first offer, but I knew it's where I wanted to go. So it's just an amazing place and it's uh, some place that I'll always hold near to my heart because it was just so good to me and, and my family and um, you know my wife and you know that's where I met her and that's where so many great memories and fr friendships were made and you know it's uh, it's just an amazing place that um, I definitely am, I, li I like to go back any chance that I get. Let's go back to high school. You're a good player in high school, but you go undrafted out of high school. What was the what were your expectations? I guess going in and then how bummed were you when? you know, your name wasn't selected. Yeah, um, so I was already committed to Auburn, um, which I, I knew that would be a great opportunity for me if the draft didn't work out. But part of me really did want to get drafted. And um, there were one or two teams that were on me, you know, pretty good. But when, 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 it, when the time came, um, just my name wasn't called. And that, that was pretty upsetting at the time. You know, I was pretty disappointed because I think just the, from a mindset standpoint, like, wow, there was other players that I, you know, I think I'm better than that got drafted and I didn't. And so that, that upset me pretty good. But um, looking back, man, I could not be more thankful that I was not and that I didn't sign and that I did go to Auburn and progressed as a baseball player and as a man. Um, and so um, as disappointing as it was, you know, I think it was, you know, one of the best things to, to ever happen to me is, was to not be drafted. You have high expectations for yourself, no question. But, you know, we were talking, it's almost a it's not a realistic to say, I mean, it is realistic, but to say, you know what? I think I'll just become the number one overall player taken, you know, yeah. after going undrafted. But how did that, you know, trigger uh, maybe a, a heightened goal for you moving forward? Yeah, that was honestly never a goal of mine, never something that I thought could be attained. Um, I just wanted to be a really good player and have a really good career at Auburn and, you know, be drafted after that and, you know, start a professional career and become a big leaguer that those things were all a part of the plan. But to be the first overall pick was definitely something that I thought was far-fetched and, you know, just wasn't going to happen to me, you know. But as the season progressed and, you know, I was pitching well and articles are coming out and, you know, the, the, real, the reality of it is that, oh, wow, this could happen. It just seemed pretty surreal to me. And then finally my name was called. Just, just so much relief so much disbelief like it just all of the above um, but wow what a day you know what a weekend for myself and my family and teammates and everybody involved but um, like I mentioned it's not something that I, that I thought would happen but when it did it's just uh, one of the most amazing feelings ever. 
Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's not very many people that could ever, you know, share that type of emotion or that type of moment. Do you feel like because of your unique story or your path, it's allowed you to kind of keep everything like this as it comes along? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things that help keep me grounded and that's definitely one of them. And I think just that sense of failure um, that I have failed in the past, I haven't always been at the top. I, you know, had to work my way uh, with the help of a lot of other people, but it's, uh, that definitely does keep me grounded because I wasn't, wasn't always thought of as, you know, the best player in the state or the country, you know, mm -hmm. or in college baseball or whatever, you know, so I had to work my way to get to those points. And I, I can always reflect on those times of failure of, you know, being not at the bottom, but, you know, not, not being near the top and, you know, having to work my way there. And um, just think back on those times because, you know, when things are going good, it's easy to, you know, just absorb all that and, you know, think of, you know, how great I am or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. But um, it can happen like that and you can get back to, you know, the lowest of lows. So I, I try to stay even keeled, never too high, never too low. And that, that's what has allowed me to get to this point. And that's what, even during those times when, you know, I was failing um, at a pretty high rate, you know, I, I never thought um, I was as bad as I was performing. You know, it's just, I, I was always right in the middle. And I think that's what, you know, has allowed me to progress to where I am today. And, um, still got a long way to go, but I'm going to keep that same mindset through it all. If I achieve what, what I'm striving for, I'm going to make a lot of people happy along the way. And so that, that's kind of, you know, what I fall back on. Swung on and missed. Out of the chase. Inside the Tigers is brought to you by Ram. How would you describe yourself watching Casey pitch? Oh God. Um, I would say as time has gone on, it's gotten a lot more anxiety ridden and stressful. I would never wanna be on my phone or look away because I was nervous because I don't wanna miss anything special that he does, even though it is really stressful. I think my heart rate gets up to like 160 every time. <laughs> but overall, it's just a really proud feeling because I see firsthand how you know, hard he works, how early he goes to the field, and just very focused all the time. Um, we make jokes about how serious and focused Casey is, but really I think it's a special um, personality trait that he has. When you're the number one overall pick, fair or unfair, there are always gonna be expectations. Fans' expectations, organizational expectations, expectations of yourself, your friends, your family. How do you honestly wear that as like, no, I'm good. I can handle all this. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. You know, it is a lot, but I'm just blessed to be in a position where people think highly of me and expect a lot of me. So I keep reminding myself that, you know, if, if I were to not have a good outing or not, you know, not win the game, you know, oh, wow, people, you know, could be disappointed. Well, I'm just fortunate to be here, and I'm fortunate that five days from now I'm going to get another opportunity, you know, to, to, to go prove them right and, you know, to fulfill those expectations. So that, that's kind of what I lean back on. Um, but also, man, like, if people knew my internal expectations, it's just, it doesn't even match, you know, what they're asking of me. So it seems like, you know, what other people ask of me sometimes is like, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm already striving for that. You know, that it's not, you're not asking more from me than I'm already asking of myself. So that's not really an issue understood, you know. So I feel like I'm in a good, good place mentally where I know what the expectations are um, because I set them. And, and I'm just striving for those, and that's what matters. And, and if, I, if I achieve what, what I'm striving for, I'm gonna make a lot of people happy along the way. And so that, that's kind of you know, what I fall back on. Swung on and missed. How about that? Swing and a miss. Look at last year, obviously the pandemic shortened season. You know, it's tough to really get into it because there's only you know, 60 games on the grid. What did you learn from just last season? Yeah, helped me tremendously. Um, and you can look on paper and look at the numbers and say, wow, this is definitely a step back. Because um, I had a 70 RA and three losses and just not really good at all. Um, but I was able to get to the big leagues for the first time, um, pitch against those quality of hitters and you know, learn a lot through failure. You know, that's just another step where when I first got to Auburn, I learned through failure. When I first got to the minor leagues, my first summer wasn't very good. I learned through failure. When I first got to the big leagues, I failed a lot. And so just being able to learn through that has kind of been my key, you know, to, to always strive for more and always move forward. So that failure really set me up for, you know, a really quality off season. Now I know what, you know, 
part of this is like. No, I just need to go execute and um, you know start winning games, which you know was tremendous um, you know for me to be able to experience last year. I know when you talk about the rebuild or whatever with the organization and and they kind of lean on the arms. That's kind of the first part of the rebuild is guys like you and Tarek and, and uh, now we see Matt Manning made his debut recently. What is your relationship like with Tarek? I see he's prominently featured here. Yep, yeah. You guys wearing your Sunday best. Yep, Tarek's probably my best friend on the, not probably, he is my best friend on the team for sure. Um, we, we've experienced everything together in the big leagues. You know, we were on the first plane ride together, sat beside each other on the way to Chicago last year. He debuted the day before I did. So it, we've kind of just been, together through it all, you know, which has provided a sense of comfortability because, you know, we, we played together in the minor leagues and lived together in spring training and we, we've taken all these steps together. So I don't know the big leagues without Tarek and um, it's definitely been good to have a friend to kind of lean on, especially during last year when I was struggling, um, you know, to kind of just bounce things off of him and, and be able to experience that. Um, so he's awesome, man. Great dude and obviously great arm and, and a great pitcher. So. Um, you know, I think us too, and you know, Matt. You know, Matt. Matt's awesome too. Um, and so I think we, we have we have a great group of guys. And so uh, you know, I enjoy getting to go in the field every day and, and seeing those guys. Man, am I, am I going to work my tail off to achieve everything that I want to achieve in this game? Um, if that's selfish or, or whatever, you know, it's just it's what I want, and I'm going to give everything that I can to get it. Struck him out upstairs. Back to back strikeouts for Casey Mize. As you've gotten more starts and, and now that you've been here a little bit, are, do you get recognized more living downtown? Yeah, um, I'll walk to the field and, you know, a couple of people every now and then will say hello. Um, there you oh, go. Oh, goodness, got a visitor here, my buddy Drogo. <laughs> What's up, Drogo? <laughs> But yeah, I love downtown living. I mean, um, seeing the people here and, and all the Tigers hats and gear, it, it's pretty awesome for me just to be around and, and, and see all those people. So it's been great. It is like a special thing when you actually know that, you know, the Tigers obviously have been around much you know, longer before you or me and will continue after we're gone. But it's like people identify with that brand, you know, with that organization, the memories that they have with the Tigers. Like how much pride do you take in being one of those organizations where it's like people see the old English D and there's yep. no question people are like that's the Tigers yeah yeah I mean I grew up like in Alabama middle of nowhere Alabama and there's still Tigers hats that you're gonna see around like I'm pretty sure I had a Tigers hat when I was younger like it's just iconic and so it's cool for me to whenever we go to other cities uh, and, and play to, to see the Tigers fans there to see somebody walking down the street in LA in a Tigers hat or, or whatever it, it's it's pretty cool for me to be like wow you know I'm a part of what that stands for. And it, it means a lot to me and I, I, I take pride in that. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I want to take that to the next level where, wow, people start seeing that hat and wow, that's a really good baseball team. You know, I want that hat too. So um, it's just cool to be a part of an organization with so much history and so much things to be excited for, not only this season, but the, for the future as well. He can't wait yeah. to take the mound. He wants to throw that first pitch, I can tell you that. Two punch outs here in the third for Mize. Five for the night. When you finish a debut or when you get your first major league win, what are the uh, reactions from, say, like your brother, or mom, and dad? Yeah. Um, obviously, very emotional for everyone involved just because they've been there since uh, day one, you know, like literal day one. Right. You know? So That's true. Um, th th they've put me in positions over and over to succeed and they've sacrificed so much time, money, effort, everything to just for me to accomplish what I accomplished on August 19th. You know, if, if my career would have ended after that, I think they would have been okay with it. You know, just he accomplished this goal that he set out for himself and we did everything, everything that we possibly could for him to get there. And so I think there was just a lot um, of emotions from that standpoint from them. Um, which means a lot to me, obviously, because we based our life basically around, you know, baseball and every vacation we took was, you know, to the beach for a baseball tournament, you know, so that's just one of the many, um, many things that I think back on about the time growing up that 
that, that we spent on me trying to achieve that. And so I hope, you know, when that day was done, that they took so much pride in that they accomplished, you know, what, what they set out to do as well, not only me, um, but they helped facilitate that and provided me with everything I needed to get there. And so I'm happy I was able to achieve that for myself, but also for them as well. Mm -hmm. So as much as it is your baseball journey, you got a lot of people that are yep. along for the ride with you, and you're just getting started and what we hope is a brilliant career. Do you allow yourself to project out and say, I'll be happy when it's all said and done if I accomplish this, or I'd like to eclipse this barrier along the way, or how, how do you hope your baseball journey? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely it? things that, goals that I've set out for myself um, that I'm gonna keep internal, um, but to say I'd be happy if I accomplished these things, I'm, I'm not gonna base happiness off of my baseball career. You know, like there's, there's things beyond that that make me happy in life. You know, baseball is one of those things and it's a really big thing, a part of my life that um, it does make me happy because I love baseball, I just love it. Um, but I'm not gonna base my happiness off of it, but man, am I, am I gonna work my tail off to achieve everything that I want to achieve in this game? Um, if that's selfish or, or whatever, you know, it's just, it's what I want and I'm going to give everything that I can to get it. And I think it'll help, it'll benefit tons of people along the way. Um, but like I said, I, I'm just going to do everything I can to make it happen because it's what I love. And um, I love achieving goals and I've set some out for myself and um, we're just getting started in this thing, but I'm going to do everything I can to make them happen. He struck him out. and misses Casey Mize.